On a very kind of simple level, we love cars. And we want to be able to love cars in the future without having to feel bad about what they bring along. My name is Eric Schoenenberger, I'm an architect. My name is Ferda Kulatan, and I'm an architect. We started SU11 in 1999. We are located in Brooklyn, New York. Our firm's main interest is to combine ideas of contemporary technology with ideas of contemporary culture. Parametric design is made for things that have repetitive nature. However, there's also a change in the repetition. There's an evolution in the repetition on a constant basis. It allows us to come up with systems that are more evolutionary, that can adapt, that can actually be fed back with information and then rearrange them themselves according to a new set of constraints. When we were approached for this project, we were really excited because it touched on a lot of issues and ideas that are very important to us. Every new technology comes with a package, it's something that formalizes it or manifests it. And at that point, it, it becomes a design problem. The journey towards a zero emission future is a very fundamental switch from the way how transportation works today. We started off with a solar idea and light idea. The, the third aspect was always that it is a positive, exciting environment that promotes a zero emission vehicle and makes it a desirable object. And it has to do with how you actually introduce a large scale system into an already very, very complex condition, like an urban city, the scale and, and complexity of New York City, Manhattan. So immediately the idea came up that it would be a, a network where we as users would find a reference to what kind of technology we're using and how we're actually protecting the environment. We began to research older eras of mobility. One of the uh, examples we looked at was the GM Futurama, and we thought that there were actually groundbreaking new moments at that point. And so what are now the groundbreaking moments that need to be brought in to transform our thinking about how we move? How can we begin to express this kind of a transformation within the cities? The Manhattan Grid well, it was not designed for the car in particular, outside of Robert Moses' adjustments in terms of the highways, etc. It doesn't really have the ability to adapt by itself. How can we begin to carve out a niche within the existing grid and overlay a secondary organizational principle, one that is based on a nodal condition? So you begin in certain areas and then you web it together over time. We feel that if the grid is a symbol of rigidity, the way how the life is actually played out on the curbs is one of dynamic exchange, you know, adaptation and flexibility. So we developed, for instance, a standalone umbrella type solar condition where people can go inside, plug themselves in, recharge their instruments, but then also learn and read about EVs and maybe a part of it is indeed then also be used for an electrical vehicle to be plugged in. We started to build in different qualities. It can open up more and let light through, let wind through. It can close up and create a larger surface for solar collection. It can be thickened or angled more or less towards the sun. It can adhere to a facade if its parameters are worked with in a certain way. And it can actually continuously position itself at the most perfect angle to get the most of the sunlight it can collect. You can walk on it, you can sit on a piece of it, you can plug in your laptop, you can charge your individual devices, and there is a particular form and shape associated to it, which we hope will become iconic to the level that people see it and recall and know what it is. We 
do not think that any kind of novelty or any kind of technological advancement should be just packaged into pre-existing modes of fabrication or architecture or design, but it needs to also generate a very specific image of what it actually does. And there's familiarity to it, but also a level of strangeness that makes you curious and say, why does this thing look like this? And hopefully um, you come closer and you try to learn and understand more about it.